on uh, the cheers that I heard walking by the locker room was Nicole Jokic awarded the defensive player of the game chain. You know, you know the, the cheers were not for him uh, winning it. Uh, the cheers were for him taking it. So as I walked into the locker room with it, even before I could announce who won it, he went over and just said, I'll take this. And he put it on and the locker room went crazy. So um, he beat me to it. Obviously, uh, that's another uh, game ceiling block by Nicole Jokic. Um, uh, incredible play to block OG Ananobi's uh, offensive rebound put back. Uh, I'm really proud of that group. You know, uh, not an easy back to back. You know, uh, we, we've come to the East Coast six different times this year. And uh, at Boston last night, tough physical game, tough loss. Get in late, get through customs, um, and no people in these stands. Um, you know, we fought, we competed, and we found a way. And uh, it was, uh, this was a really big win. They, they had won more games than anybody lately. And everybody contributed. I thought Bones Highland, huge three down the stretch. Thought our bench was really good. Um, so we got two games left. We got to go home and get ready for Orlando. What were your emotions on that final possession defensively? Um, you know, I, I was frustrated because the possession prior there was a breakdown and Freddie Van Fleet uh, who is an all-star uh, gets open for a three you know so we're really lucky to win the game those breakdowns can't happen uh, and then how often do you ever see Nicola miss two free throws in a row so now uh, instead of being up a two possession lead it's a one point game 12 seconds to go they have the ball and Siakam has gotten whatever he wanted all night they run the same play Van Fleet gets another good look, and then we give up an offensive rebound, you know, but uh, once again, uh, Nicola saves the day. So um, that was the situation we're in. I think we've won a lot of close games this year, one possession games, and tonight was just another example of doing just enough on both ends to pull out the win. What do you think, I mean, the difference was, I guess, in this game in the second half, particularly you played mixed in a little bit of zone. How did you find yourself in an opportunity to win this game at the end? Yeah, well, I think the one thing that jumps out, uh, obviously the turnovers are still an issue, 18 for 22. Uh, but uh, we did have 28 assists, which I think is a great number for us. And anytime we're over 25, our, our win-loss record is uh, tremendous. Um, but the rebounding, we were plus 15 on the glass. That's the one number that jumps out. They only scored 23 points in the fourth quarter, Katie, which is uh, a really good number. But uh, I think when you can out-rebound a team 50 to 35, uh, that usually bodes well for you. You mentioned Bones, and after the last game, you had said, I wish I would have put him in at the end of that last game. And the minutes that he had down the stretch made some really big plays. What can you say about the way that he's growing up a little bit more with this team? Well, the young man is not scared. You know, he's not scared of the moment. He's, uh, he's a tough kid. Uh, 11 points, four assists, four rebounds. And, uh, you know, we drew up a play late to get him and Nicole involved in a screen and roll. They doubled Nicola, and I wanted Bones to be that first guy in front of the double team. Uh, and there was no hesitation. You know, he missed. We missed as a team a lot of open shots tonight. Uh, and there was a point in that third quarter where he had missed some open looks. And I could see him getting down. I just grabbed him. I said, listen, keep on shooting the ball. You're a good shooter. You're taking good shots. They're going to fall. The last thing I wanted to do was to start hesitating and turning down open shots. Because against that team, you have to take what they give you. Coach, Pascal was obviously at a really high level in 2019 20, mixed in all NBA second team, then goes through a bit of struggle. Is he, in your opinion, at an even higher level than was then? Uh, it's tough for me to really say that, you know, because I, I don't I don't see them play uh, enough. Um, but I will say is this uh, he was at a high level tonight. Obviously, he was incredible. Um, you know, 35, seven assists, 10 rebounds. Uh, two steals. He impacted the game in so many ways. Uh, even late, I mean, for a guy like that who's having a game to make the play to get Freddie Van Fleet the three. I mean, he's he's scoring, he's playmaking, he's rebounding, he's defending, uh, and that's why you know he's been an all-star in this league. You know, he has that type of talent and potential. So, uh, yeah, he's a hell of a player. And as far as game planning against the Raptors now, how much has Gary Trent Jr.'s name sort of become a part of that, and how important was it to keep him? sort of cool tonight. Oh, it was, uh, I think he's a hell of a player. You know, we know him from being in our division in the West in Portland. Uh, so we've had battles with him. Uh, he's a guy that brings it on both ends of the floor uh, and just a terrific three-point shooter. Um, so going in, we stressed to our guys, last 10, the number one three-point shooting team in the league, the Toronto Raptors, led by Gary Trent, 
taking around 10 a game and Freddie Van Fleet taking almost 11 a game. So that was a, a, a huge component and point of emphasis coming in. Obviously, uh, we adhered to it in terms of Gary. We didn't listen in terms of Freddie. So we got one of the guys, um, you know, off the three-point line. But, yeah, Gary is uh, – they, they have a young, exciting team. They really do. And that backcourt is uh, – offensively, man, they can put numbers up in a hurry. Go ahead, Mike Singer. Hey, Michael, uh, back to Bones for a second. Um, I think he turned it over on a high low trying to get Joker the ball down low earlier in the game. And then in the fourth quarter, he found him uh, for that bucket late. I mean, that's obviously one example. But where do you think it is realistic growth for him, um, whether he's the starting point guard, whether he's the backup point guard, getting more minutes? What do you think is realistic for him uh, in, the, I guess, down the stretch here? Well, I, I don't know what the, the, the limit is for him. I, I don't like to ever put limitations on anybody. Um, all we ask of Bones, all I ask of Bones is to go out there and play to the best of his ability, to compete, to play hard. Um, when when things aren't going your way, to stay with it, not get down on yourself. You know, um, you know, Bones is like me. He'd be an awful poker player. You You can read him like that. Uh, and he's got to find a way to when things are going well, you know, have a poker face. When things aren't going well, have a poker face and go out there and do your job because it's never just about you. You're part of a much bigger uh, thing, and that's our team. Um, but I've seen so much improvement since we made the decision to make him a backup point guard, and he does not lack for confidence. He's got great quickness. You can't teach speed in this league, uh, and he, he can make plays that some of our guys just can't make. Um, so he's only going to get better, man. Experience is the best teacher. And these experiences are just going to allow him to mature and develop sooner rather than later. Good, Mike. Yeah. Thanks yeah, so Mike's good.